how to deal with people whose words or actions harm us. A question has been asked, how to deal with people who talk bad against us on our back or who do bad things to us, verbally or otherwise, or who try to harm us in another way. There is no one answer to this. It depends on the circumstances. If a stranger on the street talks bad to you or misbehaves with you, you must talk to him and ask him to stop doing this. If there is a person in the family, someone elder to us, we must talk to him nicely and ask him, why did you talk bad about me? Or why did you misbehave with me like this? It is possible that what you heard about him is false and he never said bad things about you. So by talking to him, you will find out the truth. It is possible that someone told you these things to create misunderstanding between you and him or to cause a fight between you and him so that he could profit from this fight. If it is someone in the family who is younger, we must talk to him or her and try to convince him to mend his ways and not do this thing again to us or to anyone else. We must educate him so he learns from his mistake and he stops his bad habit. In any relationship, there should be no communication gap. When there is no communication in a relationship, when two people stop talking to one another, such a relationship breaks down. And when there is poor communication, problems are bound to arise. And poor communication invariably leads to poor relationship. This is why it has been said that in marriage, three C's are important, communication, commitment, and caring. But in every situation, one thing we must always remember, when you realize that someone has harmed you or has talked bad about you on your back, you must talk to him and clear up the issue. Not addressing an issue and not resolving a situation will only make things worse. Of course, you, if you talk to the person politely and he is still belligerent to you, you should still warn him that you will not leave him alone and will, will do your best to protect yourself and your reputation. Some people say, we have a habit of tolerating, we tolerate insults. They think they are behaving like a saint, but actually, instead of acting like a saint, they are acting like weaklings and cowards. I know of one person who joined a political organization, hoping to bring positive change in society. But a year after joining this group, his superiors started mistreating him. They started berating him, even calling him a dog. While he worked day in and day out for the cause, his superiors would shout at him. Being young, he did not resist their actions. He did not ask them to stop mistreating him. He said he was afraid that they might kick him out of the organization and he was very committed to the cause. But by tolerating their insults, his tormentors got more encouraged and continued to berate him. Finally, after many years, he quit this organization completely. But years of verbal abuse took a toll on him. He became mentally disturbed. It took him years to recover mentally. But he said he learned a powerful lesson. After quitting the organization, he stopped tolerating any kind of insults from anyone. He even fought with bosses at work who tried to intimidate him or who tried to manipulate him psychologically. He realizes that the worst thing he did was to, to tolerate their insults. He says that when they called him a dog, he should have raised his voice sharply and asked, who gives you the right to call him a dog? Call me a dog. I'm working for the cause just like you. Stop shouting at me and stop berating me. They should have shut up his tormentors and they would have stopped with their mistreatment. But by tolerating, he only encouraged them to continue mistreating him. There is another story. One guru went to a village. The villagers complained that a venomous snake, a snake in the village was terrorizing everyone. He would bite everyone and everyone was so scared of him. People were afraid, afraid to go out of their homes. The Guru asked the villagers, take me to the snake. 
When he arrived, the Guru caught the snake and was about to kill him with the, with the trident. The snake begged him for the mercy. The Guru told him, I will let you go on one condition, that you will not bite anyone again. The snake agreed and the Guru let him go. After a few months, the Guru was visiting the village again. He went to see the snake and found it badly injured and bleeding. What happened to you? He asked. The snake replied, Guruji, I stopped biting the people and then they started throwing st stones at me. Guru replied, but I asked you to stop biting. I never asked you not to defend yourself. You should have raised your head so people would be scared and they would have run away from you. In this connection, there is a very famous saying of Chanakya, the ancient Indian Guru. He said, a snake, even if it has no venom, should it still pretend to be venomous. It should raise its head and people would think that it had venom and would run away scared. Thank you.